Uh, Scott, this next story is yours. NVIDIA admits and explains the GeForce, GeForce GTX 970 memory allocation issue. Bring us up to speed on this problem that we've been tracking in the forum, and then obviously we have NVIDIA's uh, sort of response to the whole issue. Yeah, well, there's actually a couple articles we could probably... I just <coughs> brought up here on um, the other one. Uh, this is this is kind of... It started in, in the forums because people noticed some behavior... Uh, on their own GeForce GTX 970 graphics cards where uh, the card did not appear when you're playing games and when you're in a situation where you're near the end of use, using all of its memory, uh, they noticed that it didn't use all the memory. Looks like it's, it tended to stop at about 3.5 gigabytes. And they compared it to a GeForce GTX 980, which is based on the same chip, but is a full implementation of that chip. And they found that the uh, 980 uses more memory, and then, and, and this there's a thread in our forums with this. Some people started using this little uh, benchmarks written in CUDA. It's a GP GPU type thing to test memory bandwidth, and what they found was that um, with uh, the GTX 970, the memory bandwidth um, that they measured above about three and a half gigabytes. Uh, was a lot lower than on 980. Like it would be comparable going up toward that three and a half gig limit, and then it would drop uh, on the 970 sooner than on the 980. Now both of these cards were specced as four gig cards with 256 bit memory interfaces, and yet they're behaving very differently. And so the question is why? And so Nvidia first came out. Uh, you know what happened with this Jordan? Like, this was kind of brewing in the background, and then uh, they released the GeForce GTX 970 uh, just recently, and once, mm -hmm. or nine, sorry, 960 just recently, which is a lower end card and an even lower end chip. Once that was out of the way, then they started dealing with this. And so, like, on a Saturday morning, I had to step into the office and write up the story about uh, the 970, and they actually admitted that there's a difference between the 970 and the, and the 980 on the way that they allocate memory. And they have a little little uh, statement on it, which is, I've got it up on the screen here, um, about how basically they segment the GTX 970's memory into two chunks, a 3.5 gig chunk and a 5, 0.5 gig chunk. And they basically say that in a sort of vague fashion, because of fewer cross bar, bar resources, that you can't get to that 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 small one half gig chunk on the 970 as fast. And um, then they offered some benchmark data that sort of showed that when you do have to get into uh, the situation where you use that last half gigabytes of memory, that relative to the 980, the performance uh, drop from a configuration where you didn't do that to where you did, like you raised the screen resolution or whatever, uh, that the performance drop is only a few percentage higher. Um, hmm. And people sort of scratched their heads and said, what is going on here? And we have, uh, I think, 248 comments on that story <laughs> and so that followed what followed then was nvidia um actually uh called me up on a sunday and decided to talk uh, talk to jonah albin who's a uh, senior vp of gpu engineering at nvidia one of their head guys in charge of uh developing stuff developing their gpu hardware um about the, the 970 configuration and what he said was basically that when they shipped this card they had some specs including the uh, the number of ROPs and the, the, the sort of way the memory was configured and, and uh, all of this that, that weren't really correct basically hmm. and he said that they built uh, a feature into this chip that the people who came up with like the reviewers guide in the specifications and put them out there in front of the world uh, were not they were not aware that the feature was being used and what its implications were for the actual configuration and performance of the GTX 970. Now this gets super complicated in a hurry but I'm gonna try to explain the basics um, because it's it's probably worth doing because this is a weird story. Um, so the first thing to say is that both of these cards, the 970 and the 980, are built on the same chip. 
And Jordan, you, you're maybe aware of this. I'm not sure how aware of this you are. Um, so, so help me out here. Um, when you have a 980 based on like the full-fledged GM204 GPU, right? Mm -hmm. And you're shipping a bunch of those. Some of the chips that come out of the fab are not, not everything on them is going to work perfectly. Mm -hmm. Either there are units that simply have flaws in them where they don't work or units where they need more voltage than you want to give them in order for them to work or something like that. Um, right. And so what GPU companies have done for years is make cut down versions of their right. products. They call this die harvesting where they take the chips that aren't perfect and they disable some of the units that may be troubled and then they ship those into the market for less money um, and they have there, less stuff weren't enabled. Weren't there Tricor Phenom? That, yeah. that was the story there? Yeah. 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 This this happens in lots of different ways. The sure. different cache sizes you get in different uh, Ivy Bridge, Sandy Bridge, Haswell chips, um, you know, that has to do with, uh, you know, maybe their sections of the cache that aren't good. Um, although Intel actually does some other things with their cache too, so that may not be the best example. But sh yeah, different core counts, different amounts of resources, and, and in GPUs, this is a, a common practice. If you have a GTX mm -hmm. 970, it doesn't mean you have a broken chip. It just means that you have a chip where NVIDIA has very intentionally so selectively disabled portions of that chip because... Um, Either it wasn't perfect or they just wanted to sell more widgets at a lower price. In some cases, people have gone into firmware and like tweaked to turn on some units in some places, like the, the Tricor Phenoms. They're able to turn those into quads in some cases. And it was really actually, maybe those cores worked okay, but AMD needed to lower prices and didn't want to kill the sales of the high-end ones, so they disabled a core right. and shipped it. So um, anyway... The 970s are a, a die harvested version of the GM204 chip and they have bits disabled. And it turns out that one of the things that they built into the Maxwell architecture that was not in the prior generation Kepler architecture was this ability to um, basically disable a portion of the, the L2 cache that is on the chip that is sort of fronts a memory controller. Um, in, in the way the chip is architected. And um, those L2 caches are oftentimes, like some of them will be bad. Um, and they, they have like multiple partitions here. And on Kepler, if you had a bad section of L2 cache, they would have to disable a lot of things. They'd have to disable basically one fourth of the chips, ROP units, memory controllers, L2 cache, and, and memory interfaces. And so you have products like, uh, what was it, the GeForce GTX uh, 660 Ti, I think, uh, that, that are basically like, they were the old GK104 chip with 192-bit memory interface instead of 256-bit, where they had selectively disabled, you know, a quarter of the memory subsystem because of a bad cache. When they built Maxwell, they built in a feature where they could select, selectively disable basically, basically half of a cache partition or, or one-eighth of the total level 2 cache in the chip if it was bad. And um, they'd still be able to access all, like, 4 gigs of memory. But they the problem is... When you turn off the L2 cache, you lose one of the internal connections to this like switch fabric on the chip that connects the L2 caches to the shader core. Uh, and when that happens, you lose bandwidth. And so they have this funky thing where they have a configuration where they ship this card and they segment the memory into two segments. And you've got the, the 3.5 gig, the, the seven lower memory controllers on all sort of working together in parallel to access memory and then you got this other slower segment where the L2 cache is disabled and the crossbar interconnect is disabled and if you want to access that you can get there but it's relatively slow and mm. so uh, this I don't know I'm not getting into all the technicalities the article will explain about how uh, they they stride across uh, 1k blocks to distribute uh, data across the seven, or in the case of GTX 988 memory controllers, so that all of them can be accessed in parallel when data is read sequentially. Um, you don't get that with the smaller partition. There's a lot going on there. Um, 
the the crux of it is that we didn't know about this when the when the product shipped, um, and it's mm. it's not what people expected that they were getting. Now, we reviewed this this car, Jordan, and we tested its performance in a number of different configurations, a number of different situations, a number of different games. And it's, the GTX 970 is a fast video card that is a good deal for the price. Um, but the specs are not what you thought. And actually, this has some additional uh, uh, ramifications, the, the, the way that this is configured. Uh, there's actually, with the L2 cache being disabled, there's less ROP throughput, which means less pixel fill rate, less anti-aliasing power than originally was thought. Um, and you know, it's just a little bit messy because, and, and Jonah Albin told me, he said, we screwed up. This, this is messy because NVIDIA did not communicate well uh, the specs of the card when they launched it. Hmm. And so they're coming out now, and they're they're being very, I think, very forthright. I think they're telling us pretty much the, like how it really works now. But, um, you know, the implications of it are just a little bit frustrating for people who bought the card thinking they were getting one thing and found out they're getting something else. Now, yeah. performance-wise, you know, there is an issue of, you know, what happens when you go beyond three and a half gigs and you need to use that last half gigabyte on a GTX 970. And pretty much what you're going to get is is you get seven eighth of the bandwidth in that lower three and a half gig segment and you get one eighth of the bandwidth in the upper uh, half gig segment. And so it's slow. Um, I Jonah Albin contended when I talked to him that even though it was slow, that it was faster to have that half gig on the card and access it when you needed it than to ta to spill out of memory because then you're going over PCI Express into system memory. That's the next thing that happens, right? So they have the big segment, they have the little segment, and then PCI Express. In a GTX 980, you just have a big segment and then PCI Express. But in this case, he was saying, look, this this configuration with the slower half gig memory partition is still superior to a card that just has three and a half gigabytes. So we think that's good. And, and again, they're sort of maintaining that the uh, the performance impact of it is not that great. The other thing that they've said is that they can use some heuristics in their drivers to store data in the last half gig partition that may be necessary, but isn't accessed commonly. And so the idea is kind of that you try to watch the way that memory is being used, store certain things. I think he mentioned bitmaps as one of the possibilities, so the, the, but I'm not sure that's, that's a really get, great candidate or not, but you store some stuff in there that you may not need very often, so you don't have the most demanding or frequently accessed data in that last half gigabyte. But it's there if you need it, and it's better than going over PCI Express. So that's the that's kind of their take. Um, you know, it's what they were trying to do here I think was clearly prevent people from getting too upset because they sold like Jordan I think they sold nearly 2 million 970 and 980 cards they have really Whoa. had a big success and now they have a lot of people who own these things and are finding out uh, this isn't what I thought um, and so I think this is a, a it's a liability for them um, and you know I, I kind of have two minds about it I, I think that it's true that they didn't communicate well at first. I think they should have communicated well at first. Um, I also think it's true that uh, the the product that we reviewed performed like like it did when we reviewed it, and after knowing all this, it performs the same, right? Now you can look up look for particular scenarios where, like with 4K and and certain games that have lots of textures and a big memory footprint, there may be situations where between the 970 and the 980, the 970 suffers in performance because of this memory config. Um, so that's that's not great, but I think those situations are going to be relatively rare. Um, and, you know, I'd have to burn a lot of time. I think people are expecting me to burn a lot of time <laughs> testing all this. And I'll tell you what, I've been working on another project so far. I haven't yet done that. Um, but it is an interesting question. 
you know, how much of a sort of marginal performance difference is there uh, between like a 970 and a 980 because of this config in the places where you push and you find problems because, uh, and how common are they? And so I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, you know, the, the other thing I'll say, and I didn't really say this in the write-up, but, you know, I think NVIDIA was in a, a weird spot here. Um, consumers who read the tech report are educated consumers. People who buy these video cards are not all educated consumers in the same way that our readers are. Uh, I think you understand that. I mean, that, that just happens. One thing that people buy video cards on is a key metric. Like, what do they think of? The people who have sort of been doing this for a while and aren't really into the deep, detailed stuff, they're like, oh, I want a DirectX 11 card. Like, they think about the DirectX version, right? And then it's like, they, they look at the numbers. Like, this is a 980 or this is a 970. Like, they're looking at those for relative performance. And then the amount of memory. Like that's an important marketing point in the specs. And um, I think that NVIDIA made this configuration and they sold it as a four gig instead of a three and a half gig for marketing purposes. And I don't think that you would necessarily like have to have that last half gig of memory in there if you weren't trying to make sure that your specs match the competitor specs on the store shelf. Um, that's a hard reality, and I it it may be true. I think it is probably true that this last slow half gig of memory is better to access than going over PCI Express. But it is not the same as a 256 bit four gig configuration where everything works in parallel and you get all the sequential data, uh, uh, you know, coming <laughs> streaming in like you would in an optimal situation on a GTX 980. Um, so, you know, I don't know if I bought one of these, I'd be like frustrated, but I also think it's still the best video card for that, for the, for like that segment. Now th these things have changed some because, um, AMD cut prices a whole bunch on the R9 290 recently. Those things are selling for like 269 and they've got some rebates attached. And so if you don't care that the power consumption is way higher on the, the R9 290, maybe it's time to buy one of those. Um, but this is, this is just, it, it's a, NVIDIA was, had the world by the tail and they didn't, they weren't forthright enough when they launched this product and now they kind of have a problem. Um, yeah. And, and so I, I don't know, I've seen things like there's a change.org petition where people want to like, you know, go after NVIDIA and get some restitution or something. I, I don't know about that. I mean, you know, maybe you're taking yourself too seriously. I don't know. But it's, it, it still wasn't great what they did, um, the way they communicated about this. So I guess people can make their own decisions about that. I'm, I'm not, I'm kind of of two minds about it because I, I think that uh, the, the marketing stuff has to happen for people who aren't us. And, and I get it, but it's not my favorite that it happened this way. I don't know, yeah. Jeff, Jeff and Sarah. What do you guys think? I mean, Zero. as long as the performance is consistent with what we tested, um, you know, it's it's interesting academically, and it you know, it makes sense maybe to be a little bit upset that there was some miscommunication there, but you know, the performance was pretty clear from the get go, and if there had been like a serious performance issue um, that, you know, actually reared its head in, in actual games, the, the actual games that we tested and the conditions that we tested them, uh, it would have been different. But, you know, it, it's, it's a card that still runs fine and it's still, you know, a, a good deal for the money. So, you know, it could be better, but I don't think it's a bad product. Maybe I'm being too naive, but... <laughs> <laughs> it just I mean, doesn't seem like a big, like, like that big of a deal to me. You could, you could, you could seek a scenario where maybe there is oh, yeah. a performance issue where you wouldn't have it on a, a full four gig regular config. Yeah. Um, that's that's the thing I think that bothers some people. But I maybe you're being a little too OCD about it. Uh, maybe I don't know. <laughs> Jeff, what do you think? 
Um, I, you know, I think this is a screw up. I don't think it's it's not a good thing. This is not sort of on the same level, I think, as some of the other errors that have plagued other chip companies over the years. Um, but they screwed up, and you know, it would maybe be a nice gesture if they did something for people who bought the card. I don't know, give them a game or a free game or something. But I don't think this, you know, quite comes. I I wouldn't be calling for a class action lawsuit or, or anything like that. I might feel compelled to return the card if, you know, I found situations where it wasn't performing as I expected it to, um, especially given the, the discounts that AMD has. And it sounds like, based on a couple of forum posts, that NVIDIA may be helping people who are trying to return cards that they're not happy with. Yeah. Uh, so I think if NVIDIA takes care of those people, then it, it's it's kind of problem solved for them. And, and maybe they'll be more careful about this in the future, which is is good. Yeah, they, they need to be. And, and you know, I think that the intent behind this was, you know, that they could ship a card that, I mean, this is, this is, I mean, you have to say this is marginally better than if the GTX 970 were a card with, with a 192-bit memory interface um, and 3 gigs of RAM. Is yeah. marginally better, and that was the intent. Uh, but they needed to be clear about the communication. So, um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, 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 if I here's the problem I have. If I bought a 970 and had it and was using it, and I found out about this, like I wouldn't like you can't have it back. Like I, I really like the 970s, and they're they're a good product, and I wouldn't want to give it up to get whatever like RMA or restitution or anything like that. That's just I, I, I can't imagine actually rage quitting on it <laughs> because of this. So I don't know. Jordan, you're the you're the PR expert. H- how do you handle something like this? You know it's funny, the whole time I keep thinking about what was the what were the conversations like behind the scenes before you got that phone call? Yeah. So let me ask you this. <clears throat> when you got the phone call, was it a one-on-one or was it a conference call with a PR person on the line? Oh, no. It was a conference call. Now, oh, it, yeah. was, it was the case that it was actually um, – I know Jonah Albin. I've, I've asked him questions about every right. GPU they've launched for, for several generations and, and gotten right. to sort of quiz him. He's a smart guy, and he's – I feel like I have enough rapport with him that it was fine. I didn't actually – nobody interrupted me. He and I talked. That's good. And, and there was That's none good. of that, right? And Jonah also, honestly, I think he knew his mission. I think he'd been very well briefed going into this. I, I actually put into the article some quotations from him verbatim where right, he said right. some things about, hey, we just want people, we think we build a good product. We think this feature is a good one that let us build a better product than we could have otherwise. But we want people to understand exactly how it works. Clearly that he was on message. Right. Well, that's that, that's the it. other part of it, and as some of you might know, my job very recently was, of course, doing message training and message uh, coaching with executives. So again, the other part that's that occurs to me is the session that was either had as a quick refresher session. You know, there's a conversation usually happens where it's like, okay, we we have a problem happening. We need to get someone on the phone with a journalist. Will they let them? You know, will will the journalist, i.e., in this case, you, Scott, will will they? It would be okay if they talked to a marketing person. No, they're going to want to talk to a developer. Okay, well, who do we have? We have Jonah. All right, well, um, let's get a quick uh, media training refresher. Uh, let's do that for a quick hour, and then we'll go straight into the uh, media interview. And in the in the media training, assuming he did it for this, this particular interview, it's possible that he's just done it before. But they'll probably have someone who sits there and asks him a bunch of tough questions to make sure that he's going to be able to not, you know, give the wrong quote. So I imagine it was just a long string of, you know, well, is it, you know, do you feel like NVIDIA lied here? And isn't this deceitful? And a lot of the sort of more pointed variations of the questions. And clearly he was very practiced at, uh, at, uh, in fact, just just for kicks, I know we're running long, but just for kicks, Scott, let me just pretend for a second that I'm Jonah. Ask me some really tough questions about <laughs> about the. Let me just give you the media trained version here. I just, this is just for fun. Go ahead and get, give me your give me a, some good just on the nose questions about about the accusations people are leveling leveling against uh, Nvidia. Well, I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't going on uh, on it from that angle, right? I found no, that I with, know, but just I know, but I've the, just I found with the tech guys that if you ask the right tech question, they'll admit more to you. And okay, so, like, my question wise. to him was, shouldn't you have just built a three-and-a-half-gig card? Right, right. Right. And clearly and he had the answer for that. He, he had had an answer for that, um, yeah. which was that it's better than – this is better than a three-and-a-half-gig card. It's not enough better to justify everything probably, but it is better. I mean, right? <laughs> right? right. Um, but, I mean, I guess, I guess you'd say, well, 
you know, you guys advertise this to have you know, 256 bit memory on interface, 64 ROPs, 248K of cache. It has none of that. It's clearly not what you said it was. You what, know, are you, we, what are you going to do for When we people? conceive this product, we focus on making the best graphics card possible. It's important <laughs> to us that we have a relationship with our consumers that they trust us. And clearly, there, clearly there's a misunderstanding um, in, in what came about as we got a little ahead of ourselves, clearly, in the marketing for this product and are, and are now trying to reevaluate to make sure that we're continuing to make the best graphics cards on the market. That's NVIDIA, by the way. The best graphics. You can quote that. That's the best graphics <laughs> cards on the market. And just, you know, trust is important to us. Um, and and I wouldn't want anyone to feel like there's any, you know, th th that they can't really just believe that we have the best graphics cards on the market. So, yeah, that's just, that's what you do. Am I there the only go. one who wants to buy a 970 right now? <laughs> <laughs> or or if you want to use the, the politician, you just repeat the person's name a lot. Scott, I hear you. Scott, I know. Scott, I understand. That's something that, uh, you know, and I have kids too, and I'd be worried. <laughs> yeah, I remember... Um, <laughs> I remember the first time I really got to talk to an executive who had had a lot of media training. Yeah. And it was a super smart guy who you wouldn't expect to know how to do this. It was actually at NVIDIA back in the GeForce FX days. You know, they had launched this car that did not perform up to expectations. And then they had done all these optimizations in their drivers on 3D Mark that reduced image quality, get more performance in the benchmark. And I was like, mad. And I talked to this guy and I'm like, what are you doing? This isn't right. And he's like, we we just want to have the best. We just want to create the best gaming experience possible for our users. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I was yeah. like, oh, and I had I never encountered that before. It's like <laughs> like trying to kick a marshmallow, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, and it, it takes time to figure out how you go about having that conversation and getting enlightening answers out of somebody right. who is trying to be on message. In this case. You know, I, I, I didn't think it was like well. super well. scandalous, but I was able to get him to sort of talk a little about <laughs> that the some of the pain points. One thing that, that is a pain point that we should I want to mention that, that I didn't talk about in the article is actually what happens. I'm gonna on the screen here if people are watching the stream, there's this half gig partition of memory and you can see actually the crossbar interface then uh for this half gig partition of memory is shared with the uh the seventh memory controller. Uh, supposedly on the chip. The one that's not working, right? And Well, the one that's not working is, is on the eighth one. And so it shares oh, the, the L2 cache and crossbar connect with the seventh <laughs> one. And, and the seventh one is supposed to be part of this three and a half gig lower memory segment. And um, then you've got this upper memory segment of a half gig. And th it's supposed to be one eighth the bandwidth on the half gig and, and then seven eighths the total bandwidth on the lower portion. The problem with that is that you actually don't have seven eighths worth of bandwidth on the crossbar. You only have, or sorry, eight eighths worth of bandwidth on the crossbar. You only have seven eighths total. Hmm. You cannot concurrently access the half gig and the three mm -hmm. and a half gig at full speed. Mm -hmm. And the L2 cache for that half gig one is shared with this, uh, you know, seventh memory controller. So the question is, wouldn't it slow down the entire big array to have this configuration if you're accessing the half gig, splitting the cache, and sharing the, the crossbar? And I asked Jonah about that, and he was kind of like, <laughs> like he didn't really give me a good answer. And I didn't press as hard as I should have. I was working hard trying to get notes and, and, and trying to understand it. And I, I wish I, I, I'd like to circle back on that. But honestly, I think that this config is, is um, probably... Uh, less than ideal for this half gig of memory uh, in part because they had to sacrifice to make sure that the three and a half gig portion uh, got priority. I would assume that's what their their logic looks like um, and you know without as much cash without its own dedicated crossbar that's going to be slower than one eighth. Uh, I, that's my take on it so I I don't know I, it's not the end of the world but uh, it's interesting. Um, there is a there's a question in the chat room. Was this an intentional des design decision, or or was this a way to use chips <coughs> that didn't test to 980 standards? I think the answer to both is yes. It's not an either or. This was an intentional design decision born out of the experience they had with the GK104 and prior chips, uh, where they figured out a way to disable selectively a portion of the chip and not have to disable as much as they would have in past designs. So Maxwell Architecture has this provision built in, and it is to deal with exactly the scenario where you have some L2 cache that doesn't work right.